What we're talking about today is a test that's put out, an ELISA-based test. It was called ImmunoRank. That's a research use only test. Um, it's created by Lineco. Um, it had never been brought into a CLIA environment. We um, have validated it in a CLIA high complexity lab um, and taken it from our UO into a, a laboratory that you can reference to. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, because we think that there's really just a need for this test. It does give you an immunity rank score between zero and 100. Um, we're going to validate it as a semi-quantitative assay with uh, a low, medium, and high because we feel like that's going to be the, the easiest way to kind of make sense of those numbers while we wait on additional medical publications to really guide us there. One thing I did want to mention uh, from the FDA is they came out a few days ago, MLO covered this, and said, you know, beware, antibody testing does not mean immunity, right? So the FDA is clearly messaged, we don't want labs saying, hey, you're positive for an antibody test, you're immune. That's not a, uh, it's not a 100% true statement, right? So there's a correlation there, but we need to know more about it, more research is needed. I think this goes back to the fact that a lot of antibody tests don't measure the neutralizing antibodies and they don't measure it in a quantitative way. So that's why I think that this test will Will be really valuable because the FDA is messaging they want a more robust test. They need something more than just your your general antibody test in order to make those decisions. But for the time being, you can run these tests, and it's a little bit tricky to know what to do with that lab result. We know as labs, we're never telling patients or physicians, you know, what to do with the results. Um, but hopefully, we will be able to point them to some kind of medical publications in the future that. Um, document, hey, these are immunity levels where you can feel comfortable or safe, and below these levels, you may need uh, to get a booster or some, some other um, preventative measures need to take place. So um, here's some of the science behind the test. I'm not going to go deep on this today um, because I usually have a scientist with me to cover this, and I just wanted to include it in the presentation so that you guys had it. I have all of this information and more if you wanted to go uh, go into the weeds on it. So just let us know, and you can do that through um, through messaging us. Um, some of the applications for it, we are validating this, as I mentioned, for the first time in a CLIA uh, environment as a diagnostic test. We do think it's going to have some post-vaccine um, applications and just tracking overall, overall population immunity tracking. Um, it had been used previously and continues to be used in research settings for um, different studies that are occurring and to measure vaccine uh, efficiency or effectiveness. And some other key pieces that you need to know is this does not need to be done in a BSL-3 lab. Um, we can get some pricing that's better if you do decide to uh, go forward with this and want to put it in your lab. We've negotiated with the vendor to try to get some um, good pricing for bulk uh, orders. And it is fairly high throughput. It on, runs on a 96 well plate. And so the neutralizing antibody, even on a quantitative way, um, only takes up one well. So we, we can help validate this in a way where you're only going to use one well per sample, and you can get about 88 samples on a 96 well plate. It's an ELISA plate, not a PCR plate. Um, for the titer, you have to run that um, in serial dilutions. And so you get about 22 samples. You'll get 22 samples per 96 well plate, uh, so a little bit less, but the plates are the same. So I think that's a really nice feature that you, know, you don't have to have two separate um, plates and reagent sets. You're able to use the same ones and run them either, either as titer or neutralizing antibody, depending on what was ordered. The reimbursement for antibody testing Nothing too sexy here. Um, traditional antibody testing is 42 it's across all max. Neutralizing antibodies the same for the screen. So that would be for a qualitative result, not quantitative. For a quantitative antibody, um, you get a little bit more. So you move up from 42 to 51 in some max, and I'll have that chart um, a little bit later. So you'll have it, but uh, it really doesn't um, compensate you too much more. But it is a much better test. So I think. The real win is more on the clinical utility of the result versus um, versus the reimbursement here. And so, what are the options for my lab? You know, if you guys are interested in this, you wanted to be able to offer your customers the titer or the neutralizing antibody test or both. It seems to make sense to do both since it's going to be the same equipment and same plate. Um, there's a couple options. You can either reference that test out to another lab. 
as I mentioned, we have validated this at a lab. The lab that we validated in is called MetaLab DX, and we've uh, negotiated a price of $28 a test for the quantitative neutralizing antibody um, test and for $48 a test for the COVID titer test. So these are flat lab-to-lab -lab client bill rates, um, and we can connect you with the manager over at MetaLab DX to get an agreement in place. If that's something that you're interested in, you'd be able to add it to your test menu and then reference it out. The other option is to bring it in-house. We'd be happy to do that and uh, give you some guidance on how to bring this test in-house. You can purchase from Lineco, and we can uh, kind of share what we did in a separate validation to help you guys validate this. The total cost for that is going to be about $62,000. That includes the equipment. You're going to need a ELISA plate reader, washer, and some additional ancillary equipment as well. You'll need validation supplies. You'll need kind of the consulting to write the validation plan do the data analysis and compile that into a validation summary that meets CLIA standards. Uh, so we have that package put together at 62. It might be a hybrid of the two as well, right? So you might want to test the market because it is a little bit of an unknown to know what the response to these tests will be. Um, so you could go ahead and start with referencing samples to MetaLab DX. And if you've got a book of business that made sense, we'd be happy to bring that testing in-house. I think I did some math, and you need at least probably three to four thousand samples before the break-even makes sense, and that's total, not a, not a month, um, to to bring the testing in house. So not super expensive to do, but also a little bit of an unknown market. So um, you can contact us. We had some pop-ups there on the screen. If you're interested in speaking with uh, one of our account managers, they can go through kind of what this would look like and get you some additional information and paperwork to review if it's something that you're interested in.